So ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm gonna to present three cases to highlight the importance of OCT and geography when you're dealing with the choroidal disease and in particular with uveitis. Now these are my disclaimer. So we're gonna start with one case that shows very well how OCT and geography goes hand to hand with dye-based angiography when you're dealing with the um, posterior uveitis. This is the case of a 38 year old Arabic male he presented to our clinic uh, five days uh, of uh, decreased vision and nothing remarkable in the past medical history and past ocular history. The best corrected visual acuity in the right eye is 2040 and 2050 in the left eye. Pressure is fine in both eyes and there's no degree of inflammation in the anterior segment of the eye. When we look at the back of the eye, these are two um, retina photos of the right and the left eye. Now, first of all, we look at the optic disc. You can see on the nasal side of the optic disc, there is some kind of uh, fibrotic appearance, which make us think that there was a component of neuroretinitis, which is now resolving. But the most striking feature here are these round, white, deep, choroidal, small lesions that are actually present in both eyes. Now, when we deal with the choroidal disease, um, we always go for dye-based angiography, and in particular, ICG angiography. So the patient was sent for combined FA and ICG, and here are the early frames for the right eye. You can see nothing majorly remarkable in the, in the FA on the left side of the screen, maybe slightly hot disc, but what's striking is on the right side of the screen, uh, the ICG appearance. So there are lots of uh, small uh, hypofluorescent lesions, um, diffused along the arcades and all, all over the posterior pole. And inter, in the intermediate phase, they uh, change in number, they're less in number, but they're more and more visible, and they persist during the late five phases of the ICG. Now, um, when we have uh, the, in the left eye, we have the same appearance uh, with a small hypofluorescent lesion along the inferior arcades. Now, when we deal the, with this uh, particular kind of ICG appearance, the diagnosis is choroidal granulomas. Now, um, choroidal granulomas are uh, um, usually present in three kinds of disease in uveitis. One is VKH, one is sarcoidosis, and one is tuberculosis. So the patient was sent to the lab, and uh, um, we got an ACE, Pontifron Gold, to check for sarcoidosis and for tuberculosis, and then sent the patient to imaging. We, um, to check um, the status of the lungs. The quantiferon gold came positive and the chest CT negative. So the diagnosis was of TB choroiditis with no lung involvement. Now, what is a granuloma in the choroid? The granuloma is uh, a cloth of uh, inflammatory cell which is surrounding the bacteria. So as such, it is a mass in the choroid and it's occupying space. Um, when it's occupying space, it's also compressing the vessels of the corocapillaris and of the choroid. So um, our question was, can we use OCT angiography in this patient to detect those granulomas which are occupying spaces and uh, um, blocking the flow? Now, this is the uh, 12 by 12 swept source OCTA of the right eye of this patient. This is the superficial capillary plexus. And if we go deep into the corocapillaris, but mostly into the choroid, you see lots of these uh, flow voids, round, small in appearance, which mirror what we were seeing in ICG. Um, we take a slab of the OCT uh, B scan with a superimposed flow, and you see that this flow void, one of these flow voids, for example, corresponds very well to a lesion in the choroid which is a mass, and it's blocking the um, blood flow. So this is a granuloma of the choroid. We have the same appearance in uh, the left eye. This is the ICG we were seeing before with the hypofluorescent granulomas, and you see very well how OCTA of the um, choroid is mirroring this appearance with flow voids that are corresponding to granulomas. Now, the patient, of course, was uh, um, sent to the uh, infectious disease doctor, was started on quadruple therapy for the tuberculosis and on the prednisone. And this is the evolution of the patient through a multimodal imaging. Now, here we have on the top row the ICG at baseline and on the bottom row the OCTA of the choroid at baseline, um, highlighting the choroidal granulomas. You can see after six months, the choroidal granulomas 
on the uh, ICG have mostly completely resolved. There are just a bunch here, and they have resolved them mostly completely in the OCTA of the choroid. And once again, the lesion that we were seeing on the corresponding B scan with a superimposed flow, so this mass blocking the blood flow of the choroid, is completely re resolved at six months. So the resolution, of course, is not just in the right eye, but also in the left eye. You see this is the um, early ICG on your left side at uh, uh, six months, and this is the OCTA of the choriocapillarite at six months, and there are mostly no um, granulomas left and the late ICG, maybe a couple of granulomas here and there, which are reflected very well on the OCTA of the choriocapillaris. So what are the take-home points of this case? Um, ICGA still is the um, clinical standard at baseline for uh, um, uh, granulomatous choroiditis as TB and sarcoidosis, but it can be accompanied by sweat source OCTA. But when you are following this patient, serial ICG angiography um, can be dangerous, uh, sometimes life-threatening, and they are not, uh, they are time-consuming as well, while a swept source OCTA can be the perfect way to follow up these patients. Moving on to case two, now that we have proven that um, OCTA, swept source OCTA can go hand-to-hand -hand with dye-based angiography, our question is, uh, can we just use OCTA in some cases and completely forget about dye-based angiography. Well, this is a case of a 28-year-old Arabic male. He came to the emergency department with floaters and with a blurry vision in the left eye. The past ocular medical history completely unremarkable. Right eye, you can see vision, pressure, and the appearance of the front are completely normal. While the left eye, the vision is quite impaired. Uh, it's a 2200 vision, and the pressure is slightly higher than we would want and there is inflammation in the front. There's uh, two plus uh, cells in the anterior chamber and two plus cells in the, in the anterior vitreous. This is the appearance of the um, left eye, the retina appearance, and of course we want to concentrate on this particular white lesion. When we see such lesion, for most of us it's uh, a straightforward diagnosis. We have uh, a white area, uh, which means all, most of the time means an infection, and we have uh, a small scar next to it. And if we scan with the um, OCT through the lesion, you see that the retina has uh, a completely disorganized anatomy, which make you think of a retinitis, and there is uh, a blocking of the uh, underlying choroid. So the choroid is affected as well. So this is a retinochoroiditis or choriretinitis, whatever you prefer. So when you have this kind of appearance, you always send the patient for uh, um, IgM and IgG for, to look for toxoplasmosis, and in this case, they came out positive. So the diagnosis is quite straightforward. This is a retinochoroiditis securing to infection from toxoplasma gondii. But now the question is, how do we follow this patient? Should we get fluorescein and ICG uh, at baseline and maybe follow the patient like this? Well, I was uh, a big supporter of uh, dye-based angiography for toxo because the ICG can actually highlight uh, satellite uh, of um, infection and like in acherialized arteritis, so infection of the vessels. But in this particular patient, uh, I, I actually used uh, for the first time uh, OCT angiography just to follow the patient. Now you can see the lesion and you can see the swept source OCTA of the superficial capillary plexus uh, highlighting very, very well the areas of retinitis. So we have a way which does not involve the, a dye to uh, measure and follow up the area of uh, involvement of the retina vessels. And if we go deeper, now we have a perfect picture of the uh, focus of infection at the level of the choroid with all the satellites of um, infection next to it. Now, OCTA, uh, it's not the only tool that we can use. Swept source gives us a perfect visualization of the vitreous. And one of the hot topics in uveitis right now is uh, the subjectiveness of measuring inflammation. We measure inflammation by counting cells uh, at the slit lamp, but this is very, very subjective. Changes from one physician to the other. But using OCT, uh, swept source OCT, you see very, very well, you can actually count the cells in the uh, vitreous and you can follow up. So the patient, after one week, you see the decrease in the inflammatory cells in the vitreous. After uh, um, one more week, 
you see there are less and less inflammatory cells and at the one month follow-up they're mostly resolved. So this is a great way, an objective way to assess the inflammation of the features. Now, um, in this patient, I did not use dye-based angiography at baseline, and I did follow and monitor this patient just with OCTA. And let me show you um, the results. So this, on the top row, the patient at baseline, on the bottom row, the patient after one month of the correct antibiotic therapy with Bactrim DS and uh, uh, cortisone. Now you see that the lesion is uh, mostly fibrotic um, and uh, it's co nearly completely healed. And this is mirrored at the level of the retina by a restoration of the blood flow uh, in most of the areas of the retinitis. And you can see the focus of choroidal infection that was present as baseline is mostly gone on, uh, um, on the OCTA of the choroid. Uh, this is mirrored as well uh, in a normal B scan uh, um, where there is a consolidation of the area of retinitis and the choroidal architecture is mostly restored. So what is the take home point here? Well, swept source OCTA can replace in some, in some diseases such as toxoplasmosis the dye-based angiography in, in monitoring the uh, improvement of patients uh, um, in, with retinochoroiditis. And now one last case. In this case, very quick case, I want to highlight how uh, swept source and OCT angiography can be used to, um, to prove the non-involvement of the choroid and to prove uh, where the disease is actually localized. This is a 19-year-old Arabic female. Uh, since six months, she started developing a scotoma in the left eye with flashing lights, and she was sent to us with a uh, for a second opinion. Nothing remarkable in past medical and ocular history. The vision is quite good, she's 20-20 in the right, and the left eye, which is the involved eye, is missing just a couple of letters, and the, the um, pressure is fine. No inflammation in the um, anterior chamber. This is the appearance of the left eye. Now, I want to highlight, first of all, this area. So you have a white area around the optic nerve, um, and you have all these small, whitish area which are located the deeper into the retina not right at the level of the choroid but in the deep retina and if we if we scan through with normal sdoct you can see that this um, area of uh, annular area of involvement around the optic nerve corresponds to a loss of the photoreceptors of the ellipsoid zone and you can see that all these white small dots correspond to small areas of uh, ellipsoid zone loss, so loss of the photoreceptors. So of course when you see such kind of uh, posterior uveitis, if we want to call it, you go straight away for, fluores for autofluorescence. Now autofluorescence here um, is uh, showing uh, a hyper autofluorescent corresponding to the annular disease around the nerve. Why is it hyperautofluorescence? It's a disease of the uh, ellipsoid, of the photoreceptor, so it's just unmasking the underlying normal autofluorescence of the uh, retinal pigment epithelium. And then all the other satellite lesions that we were seeing, uh, they were very difficult to catch on uh, um, the uh, fundus photo, but here they're very clear. They correspond to areas of loss of the photoreceptors and unmasking of the um, RPE autofluorescence. We go, of course, for uh, fluorescein and ICG, which is not telling us a lot. You see, ICG is showing no involvement of the choroid. And fluorescein is showing mild staining of these areas, but it's not picking up all these small satellite lesions. So our question is, do we have other ways, non-invasive ways, to prove where the, the lesions are located, at which level of the retina, and to prove that there's no choroidal involvement? Yes, we do. So um, wide field and fast OCT, this is a composite of 215 by nine uh, uh, swept source OCT and fast. And this is a slab at the level of the ellipsoid zone. So this is the slab of the disease part of the retina. And you can see very well how these hyperreflective hyper areas highlight the loss of the photoreceptors. So, we have a confirmation through unfast OCT that the disease is at the level of the photoreceptors. Now, how can we exclude uh, the involvement of the choroid without ICG? Well, the, the way we did before for the other patients. 
um, we have here a um, composite uh, of 5, 12 by 12 uh, OCTA at the level of the choroid, and you can see the choroid is completely intact. So uh, now through multimodal imaging, we can put together a diagnostic hypothesis. Now, autofluorescence and the, the ANFAS OCT are confirming that they're just involvement of the photoreceptors. ICGA and the swept source OCT composite are excluding any choroidal disease. So in my mind, the diagnosis was either mute, but it's very unlikely because there's no involvement of the RPE. But more, um, more, more, I'm pointing towards one of those particular kind of disease, which is Azor, acute zona local to outer retinopathy, or ANOR, the annular form of the ret retinopathy. The patient was followed and she's stable, she wasn't treated because we don't know enough about this disease. And after all, she's 2020. So the take home point of this particular case is that we can go wide field both with ANFAS and with swept source OCTA, covering nearly 90 degrees of the retina. And uh, ANFAS OCT can actually uh, detect the layer which is affected in, uh, uh, in this particular entities, whether it is the ellipsoid zone, the choroid, or the outer retina. And finally, swept source OCTA is a valid uh, alternative to uh, ICG um, to exclude or confirm the choroidal involvement uh, in particular posterior uveitis. And with this, I thank you for your attention. And this is a, a composite uh, of um, a swept source OCTA of the choroid. And you can see it covers most of what we can see with uh, a wide field ICG. Thank you very much for your attention.